we're very positive on NVIDIA. We have been very positive on NVIDIA. We bought it down when it hit nearly $100 uh, in the fourth quarter last year. Uh, and, and then it tripled as some of our other uh, AI-oriented stocks stood still. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, believe it or not, many people do not believe this about us. We're looking at relative valuations of uh, names in the AI space. And we were looking at uh, NVIDIA at 25 times sales, which is where it is. And Tesla, which is probably the biggest AI story out there, is at six times earnings. UiPath yesterday uh, reported it is a beautiful AI play. It too is at six times sales. And as far as NVIDIA goes, there are a few reasons we uh, we take some pause. It, it still meets our minimum hurdle rate of return, so 15% at a compound annual rate over five years. And so you'll see it in some of our more specialized portfolios. We're looking for uh, the better values, but the, the risks to uh, NVIDIA would include cyclical. When I hear shortages, shortages, shortages about GPUs or anything, I begin to think about um, about the cyclicality of a group. Uh, competition, Tesla is coming up with its own chip, uh, Meta Platforms, Google, their own chips uh, for more specialized large language models. Uh, and, and then the tech itself, we're learning from Meta Platforms, the Llama model uh, is able to do with less computing power, but more data, it's able to deliver better models. So there are puts and takes here as there always are. People who understood the NVIDIA story, we were pounding the table on it on 2014, you know, really till 2021. And many people actually put it into their portfolios, their own portfolios, and they may have held it. We have not gotten uh, much pushback. And the reason is people know uh, that we are on, we are on AI, but we're doing it in a little bit of a differentiated way. NVIDIA has become a check the box stock. That's why the valuation is where it is. But we are looking for those plays uh, that have not only the, the vision from management team point of view and broad distribution, but also proprietary data and AI expertise. So uh, we're just pivoting to another set of plays that most people have not discovered yet, yeah. much like they did not understand that NVIDIA was an AI play really until very recently. If this cycle were to worry, we, we tend to think we're going to have a, a harder landing than most uh, most economists do. If the cycle were to hit it, and, and NVIDIA surprisingly gets hit very hard by cycles because the inventory builds up, build ups, and I would say we're in one of those right now, uh, are so spectacular. If we, uh, if we have a combination of a correction and the recognition by the marketplace, perhaps, that some of these models don't have to be as large and don't need as much computing power as more companies use more specialized models. Uh, you know, you get the confluence of a reality check. You know, NVIDIA is just a very powerful company. They, they are so exquisitely positioned in the space, but you're paying for it now. Frustration yesterday was another one of our AI plays, uh, UiPath, uh, reported a quarter and revealed some products AI products and really uh, opened the, the kimono a little bit more in terms of what it is doing on the AI front. And it's going, to, it's going to be one of the most interesting plays out there, I think. It was down 10% after beating numbers because it talked about the economy being uh, somewhat uh, variable, I think is the word uh, it, it, it is using. It's, uh, it was fact, uh, focused on the macros and that's what uh, analysts focused on. Now it's it's having a good day. It's up about 10% today. And we publish our trades at the end of every day. And you'll see we bought UiPath in almost all of our portfolios, ARKK, ARKW, uh, ARKF, uh, ARKQ. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we use those opportunities when we feel like the market isn't seeing something that we are.
especially when it relates to artificial intelligence. The autonomous taxi network that we believe uh, Tesla is building, uh, it has more data, talk about proprietary data, it has more data on of real world driving miles than all of the other auto companies and technology companies like Waymo put together around the world, we would say, except for perhaps China, because we don't know exactly what's going on there. And we do believe that the autonomous taxi platform opportunity is a winner take most opportunity. The company that gets a person in an autonomous vehicle from point A to point B as quickly as and safely as possible yeah. is probably going to get the lion's share of the market. And that company will, in the United States, uh, we believe, be Tesla. And we believe globally that opportunity will scale from zero today to eight to ten trillion dollars in revenues uh, by 2030. Uh, so you can see why we're so excited by Tesla. It is um, it is the furthest advanced from an AI point of view, and it's even becoming a manufacturer of factories um, using artificial intelligence and becoming more and more and more efficient in manufacturing uh, factories and and cars. Uh, we think it's the most e efficient in the world right and now. When history books are written, we'll look back at this period and we'll see the sharp rise in inflation, uh, which was caused by massive supply chain, really supply shocks from COVID COVID and the war in Ukraine. And you will see, so sharp increase, and it feels like it's so slowly coming down. But when the charts, when you start looking at these charts in history, this decline will be look very like it was very rapid, and we will descend into deflationary ter territory. Uh, Don Luswin wrote a, a, a piece, uh, it was an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, I believe, uh, about this, and I think the Fed, uh, is going to be blamed for sending us into a deflationary period. Already we're getting negative uh, signs for guidance. Home Depot, its same store sales down three to five percent for the year now they're expecting. We got uh, uh, GDI, which is the other side, gross domestic income, which is the other side of gross domestic product. And they need to equal, but they're at a record gap right now it's been negative, so in recession territory for the last two quarters. Uh, and I think many companies are going to feel a hard landing and it's going to come both from units and prices. I think more and more companies are reporting this on their earnings yeah. report. These, these uh, economic statistics that take all the oxygen out of the room are hugely lagging and they're not even getting it right. If you look at the digital world, gross domestic product was, that statistic was devised in the industrial age. We're in the digital age right now. Yeah. So we pay more attention to gross domestic income, which tends to be more accurate as we're seeing these inconsistencies.